Before a storm, there's always a quiet. This night, the calm felt heavy as if the city itself was bracing for what was to come. On the other side of the world, Lex Luthor had used the data from the mother box to uncover Bruce Wayne's secret identity. He shared this crucial information with Deathstroke, setting the stage for a devastating assault. Enter Charles Vandermeer, a prominent financier with a polished reputation. To the public eye, he's an esteemed businessman. Yet behind this facade lies a dark agenda, with Deathstroke pulling the strings from the shadows. The initial strike was not physical, but financial. Wayne Enterprises faced severe disruptions as Vandermeer's operatives under Deathstroke's direction tampered with the stock market and vital transactions. The damage was immediate and severe. In the Batcave, Bruce was relentless. He analyzed the attacks, trying to trace the origin and prevent further damage. Even as exhaustion took its toll, he remained focused on finding a solution. The relentless attacks were taking a toll on Master Bruce. The stress of the situation was visible, balancing the responsibilities of running Wayne Enterprises with his duties as Batman was proving to be increasingly difficult. The attacks on Wayne Enterprises escalated. Leaks and legal troubles compounded the financial crisis, further destabilizing Bruce's world. The assault was designed to leave him reeling. The city felt the weight of the attacks. Job losses and unpaid wages led to a surge in crime and economic downturn. Gotham, already fragile, was pushed to the brink as the ripple effects of Wayne Enterprises' struggle became apparent. Batman's investigation into the stock market revealed a disturbing pattern. The anomalies in Wayne Enterprises' stock combined with Oliver Queen's insight and an insider's confession pointed directly to Lex Luthor as the mastermind behind the financial chaos. The effects of the attacks were evident across Gotham. The city felt the strain as businesses faltered and infrastructure suffered. Bruce faced mounting pressure to act swiftly and decisively now that he knew his enemy. Master Wayne had finally uncovered the layers of deception surrounding Lex Luthor. It had taken weeks of meticulous analysis, financial patterns, hidden accounts, and sophisticated encryption. But here he was, at the heart of the storm. There was no need for words. Lex had already prepared a message, a letter scrawled in tight, deliberate handwriting. Remember, it began followed by a date that chilled even Bruce Wayne's iron resolve. It was one of Joker's elaborate games, a whole floor of civilians held hostage, rigged to explode. Batman had responded as he always did, swiftly, methodically. He knew the Joker's tricks, or so he thought. In the chaos of the explosion, the Joker made his escape laughing into the night, but inside it was no laughing matter. Lives hung in the balance, and the clock was ticking. That's when Grant Wilson appeared, determined, brave, and all too unprepared for what was about to happen. In that moment, there were two choices, save the young girl trapped beneath the wreckage or secure the foundations of the floor, risking both lives. Grant's sacrifice was made in an instant, a choice born of courage, of humanity. He shielded the child with his own life, while Batman made the agonizing decision to save the rest of the hostages. But it was a choice that would haunt him forever. When Slade arrived, it was too late. His son Grant lay motionless amidst the rubble. No amount of power or vengeance could undo what had happened. And from that moment on, Slade's heart turned cold. And so the burden fell upon Master Wayne, as it always did. The weight of choices made in the heat of battle, the cost of every life saved and every life lost. The letter was clear. It was not just about revenge. It was about making Batman remember. Remember the choice that had cost Grant his life. And so it begins. The confrontation between two men, both shaped by loss, both driven by their sense of justice. The city, once a beacon of resilience, was now teetering on the brink. Master Wayne had always carried the burden of Gotham's safety. But this time it was not just criminals he fought. He battled against the very foundation that held Gotham together. Master Wayne had learned long ago that even the most cunning of criminals leave a trail. Slade Wilson was no different. The puzzle was complex, but there was always a way to fit the pieces together. 
The trail had led him far from Gotham, but no matter the distance, Master Wayne was never far behind those he hunted. He knew the dealer had vital information, and he knew how to extract it. Sweden, a place far removed from the turmoil of Gotham, but it had become part of Deathstroke's operation. Master Wayne knew that Deathstroke's reach extended far beyond Gotham's borders, but every move left a trail, and he was closing in. Master Wayne was a detective at heart. He knew that even the most erratic criminal behavior had a pattern. It was in those patterns that the truth was hidden, waiting to be uncovered. Every clue led further into the maze, but Master Wayne had always excelled at finding the center. Slade Wilson had become elusive, but even the greatest of predators left a scent. And once caught, Master Wayne would not let go. Slade had always been one step ahead, a predator in every sense. But Master Wayne was no ordinary prey. He had spent his life chasing criminals across the globe, and no fortress, no matter how hidden, was beyond his reach. It had all led to this. Two men, both forged in combat, both shaped by tragedy. But Slade Wilson was not just a soldier, he was a man consumed by vengeance. And vengeance, Master Wayne knew, was a dangerous force to reckon with. It was a message, a reminder of a choice Master Wayne had made long ago. A choice that had led to the death of a young man and to the creation of an enemy far more dangerous than he could have anticipated. Master Wayne had faced many impossible choices in his career, but the night Grant Wilson died would always stand out in his mind. The young man had been brave, selfless even, but sometimes bravery comes at a cost. Master Wayne's investigation led him to this forsaken factory. Through meticulous analysis of financial transactions and intercepted communications, he uncovered Deathstroke's latest hideout. The trap was already set. The factory's sudden illumination revealed Deathstroke's trap. It was a calculated setup meant to exploit Master Wayne's determination. Every detail was intended to lead him deeper into danger. Deathstroke's cruel twist was to broadcast Alfred's peril. The live feed was a brutal reminder of the stakes. Wayne Manor was rigged with explosives, and Alfred's life was on the line. The situation grew more dire with the discovery of a second bomb on a cruise ship. Lucius Fox's report confirmed the ship's imminent danger, complicating Master Wayne's dilemma. The battle with Deathstroke was not just physical but psychological. Every moment spent fighting was a moment lost in dealing with the bomb's threatening lives. Master Wayne was pushed to his limits. Master Wayne's reach extended to all his resources, but the complexity of the bombs and the distance were formidable obstacles. He was faced with the impossible task of being in two places at once. The heart-wrenching decision was made. Master Wayne chose to save the lives on the cruise ship, knowing it would cost Alfred's life. The weight of this decision would haunt him forever. The explosion at Wayne Manor was a devastating blow. Alfred's death was a personal loss of immeasurable magnitude, a consequence of Master Wayne's decision to save many at the cost of one. Master Bruce was able to defeat of Deathstroke, but it did little to ease the sorrow. Master Wayne's victory was overshadowed by the personal cost. He was left to face the consequences of his choices alone. The destruction of Wayne Manor was not merely the loss of a building. It was the final severing of a connection, a symbol of the man Bruce had been. With Alfred gone, Wayne Manor became a graveyard of memories, a reminder of the price he had paid. Alfred always insisted on simplicity. He had no need for grandeur, only loyalty. His service to Bruce was never about what could be seen, but what was felt. In life, he was a protector. In death, a constant reminder of Bruce's humanity. Lucius Fox, always the pragmatic one, sought to help Bruce in any way he could. But even he understood that no technology, no strategy, could fill the void left by Alfred's death. Gotham was always on the edge, teetering between order and chaos. With Wayne Enterprises crippled, the city's infrastructure faltered. People lost jobs, their livelihoods, and in desperation, crime flourished. This was the cost of Lex's cruel game. Master Wayne was always prone to isolation, but this time was different. This time, the weight of failure was too much to bear. The loss of Alfred, the collapse of Wayne Enterprises, 
the suffering of Gotham, these burdens became chains pulling him deeper into the abyss. Flex Luthor had always believed himself untouchable, but no matter how much he manipulated, no matter how many lives he destroyed, Master Wayne's resolve was unbreakable. This confrontation was always meant to happen. Master Wayne always sought justice, never vengeance, but Lex had crossed too many lines. The punch was not just a physical act, it was an expression of the pain, the anger, and the loss that had consumed him. The road to recovery would be long, but Master Wayne never shied away from the impossible. Gotham needed its protector, and Wayne Enterprises needed its leader. In Alfred's absence, Bruce found strength in the memory of his unwavering loyalty. The city of Gotham would always be in danger, but as long as Batman was there, it would never fall. For all the loss, for all the sacrifice, Master Wayne's mission endured. In the end, Alfred's legacy was not just in his service, but in the man Bruce became. He had guided him through darkness, and even in death, his wisdom remained.